Good morning, everyone. First, I'd just like to say um, it is such a blessing for me to be here with all of you on this first Sunday, official first Sunday here at Mother of God. I am very honored and blessed to be here. So thank you very much for welcoming me here in your home. So today, as we heard in the gospel, we hear that it is the feast in our church. It's the feast of the transfiguration. And when, sometimes when we hear that word transfiguration, it's just such a big word. It's such a technical term. Oftentimes, we just kind of, it loses us. So if we just break the word into two pieces, it's very easy for us to understand. So trans means to change. Figure, a figure. So transfiguration, a figure changing. And so we see that Jesus takes the, three of the apostles, we don't know why he takes those three in particular, but he takes three of them, takes them up a mountain, and he's transfigured before them. So what does this mean? Jesus, in this moment, is trying to prove to them, he's trying to show them, he's trying to reveal to them who he actually is. So the apostles see Jesus doing all these beautiful miracles, but they still don't quite get that he's not just a prophet like Moses. He's not just like Elijah, another prophet. He's God. He's God made man and God who is accessible, God who's near, and God who's with us. And so he re reveals this, this hidden power when you look at Jesus, if we were alive with the apostles at the time, when you look at Jesus, he looks like a regular man, and he is. He's fully man. But underneath it all, the full divinity of God dwelling inside of him. And so he reveals this to them. And he reveals this to them just before his passion. Because he's trying to prepare them for what they're about to experience the suffering, the pain that they're going to endure. They had no idea what was coming to them, but Jesus obviously knew. And so he's revealing this, this power, this glory in a difficult time. And this is how God works with us. God reveals himself to us in the, in the most powerful ways in the most unexpected times and the most difficult times. But oftentimes, we get so lost in the difficult moment, we get so lost, we almost drown in that difficulty and that challenge, that it's, we almost have lost our sight of God. We've lost our sight of our faith. We miss that opportunity for God to reveal His power to us in that difficult moment because we're caught up in our own world and then we get we get this crazy anxiety oftentimes because we're not we, we start to imagine in that moment that God is far from us God is not able to help me in this moment or I'm on the other extreme God is unapproachable he's and I'm just kind of too comfortable with God God is just a figure that, you know, I kind of come to when I need something. Or, you know, if you don't give me what I want, then I'm not going to waste my time coming to church every Sunday or praying or doing whatever I need to be doing. So we have these two extremes. Either we're afraid of God, He's untouchable, He's beyond us, or I'm just so comfortable with God that I kind of treat Him like anything else. And there's no balance. And we've lost sight of who God actually is and who He wants to be in that moment, especially in that moment of confusion, in that moment where we want to have anxiety, when we want to lose our faith. So just a, a quick story, or I'll try to keep it quick. It's kind of a long story. <laughs> just recently, I just came back from Europe with, uh, with my family, a few of my family members. It was a beautiful trip, and it was filled with just amazing... Um, it, just amazing adventures. So one of the adventures of this trip, uh, there was only five of us, including me, there was only five of us. So we're in Assisi, where St. Francis of Assisi is from, 
and we're waiting to uh, get on our train to go to um, Venice. Mind you, I didn't even really want to go to Venice, but whatever, it was nice. So we're waiting for the train to come. The train comes, and if you've been to Europe, you know that when the train comes, you don't have much time. You need to jump on that train because the, the doors will shut and they'll leave you. They don't care. So we're standing there and we meet this very nice girl and she starts speaking to us in English. I'm like, thank you, God, someone speaks English. So she's, she's speaking English to us. We're speaking to her. And all of a sudden, the train comes and we all just, you know, jump on this train. I got distracted with her because she wanted to talk. And so for like two hours, I sat on the train with her. I'm talking to her. Like, well, this is, you know, God is using me. How great, how beautiful. I go back to my seat and I'm looking for one of the bags that we had, one of our carry-on bags. And it was filled with all of our gifts that we had bought from the whole trip. So I look up and I'm like, Mom, where is the red bag? And she's like to me, uh, we will look under our seats, we look in, uh, on top, no red bag. It hit us. In that moment, we left our bag in a CC at the train station, right at the platform. In that moment, my heart dropped. All of our hearts dropped. All of our gifts were in there. We spent money on those gifts. And we're in Europe. And if you've been to Europe, you also know that nobody really cares to help you in Europe. If you don't speak their language, you're useless and you're pointless to them. So how are we going to get our gifts? We're two and a half hours away. We're almost in Venice. Our bag is in Assisi. And so it hits us. We met this nun in Assisi. She became, she literally, she became family to us. She took us on a tour of Assisi from nine to five. She was with us. She literally became one of us. So thank God we took her number. We called her. She's like to me, okay. She's like, we're going to go to the train station. She's like, I'm going to call you in 20 minutes when I get to the train station. So 20 minutes goes by, no call. An hour goes by, no call. Two hours, no call. Three hours, and I'm calling her and she's not answering. You imagine our fear, our anxiety, we're freaking out like, how are we going to get our bag? And it's also Europe where, you know, there's thousands of people traveling. So somebody could easily have taken it on purpose or just taken it on an on accident. And that would have been it. So finally she calls and three hours later, we're almost in Venice. And she's like, praise Jesus, we got your bag. And she's from Africa. So she's really cute. She's got this beautiful little African accent. And I'm like, thank you guys. They're like, we're freaking out. We're like, wow, you know, praise God. And, and so then we're like, okay, so how are we going to get our bag? We're four hours away and you're in a CC and how is this going to happen? So this whole entire time, I, I'm having this temptation to get this crazy anxiety, to get this like fear, this, this, this almost this anger, like God, like why would you allow that to happen? Like, you know, these are gifts for other people. And even though it seems like it's small and obviously we all have our struggles and, and this could, you know, we have struggles sometimes in, in, greater, um, in greater levels, obviously. But for us, this was kind of big. So, and then she's like, okay, well, you know, I'm like, well, we're going to go to uh, Rome in like three days. Maybe you can send it to us. She's like, Father, we have no idea how to send it to you. I'm like, oh, no. So she, so 20 minutes, half hour later, she calls me. She's like, we have a nun, we have one of our sisters that's going to be going to Rome in three days. And she's going to meet you there in three days. And she's going to give you your bag. Wow. So my point is that in that moment, we wanted to have this crazy anxiety because things weren't going the way we wanted. Things weren't happening the way we wanted. But God was trying to reveal himself to us. He was trying to reveal his power, his glory, his authority over all things. And that's the first thing that we forget when we want to have anxiety. That's the first thing that we want to, that we want to do is we want to forget that God is in control of all things. That he sees the bigger picture and that his hand is in every single little detail. I mean, at that moment, okay, yes, we got our bag. Okay, how do we get our bag now? And he worked it out. And this is how God works. This is how God wants to work. So when that moment comes 
where we have this anxiety, this fear, and we want to lose our faith, we want to feel like God is too far, or that God doesn't care, or, you know, that, you know, just God is not powerful, He's not strong enough to fix this problem. That's oftentimes when our faith, we have that opportunity to make a choice, regardless of the feeling that may come. We might have a feeling of anxiety, we might be freaking out, but we have a choice in that moment. We have to make the choice to say, God, I'm giving you glory and I'm giving you all power. And I, and I believe that you are going to bring something good out of this regardless of how I might be able to see or how I might be able to perceive this. And that's when our faith is strengthened. That's when God is able to show His glory and He's able to transfigure our faith, to change our faith from one level to the next. Our faith is not strengthened without problems, without challenges. Oftentimes we think, you know what? I'd have more faith if I didn't have all these challenges. But it's actually the opposite. It's through the challenges, it's through the fear, it's through the anxiety that God wants to reveal His glory and His power. So let's stir up an awe of who God is. Let's not forget who God is, how beautiful He is, that all power and authority are His, that in His providence He's working wonders for us even though we cannot see, even though we may not be able to see. And so, just a, uh, just a tip or something to help us, if you do struggle with fear and anxiety, or even if you don't, I think it's really important this day and age, um, those fidget spin spinners and all the different apps that we have on our phone, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, we're really, really busy in mind. We don't really have time to clear our minds, to keep our focus on Christ. So what are we doing to keep our mind focused so that when, those, when that fear comes or when that challenge comes, I'm ready for it? We're not ready for it because our mind is in so many different places and we've almost become like robots. We're just kind of, we wake up, we go to work, it's like a routine and we don't even, we have no awareness of God's presence. We have no awareness, awareness of His power in our lives. So, my, my tip for us today is 10 minutes of silence a day. 10 minutes of silence a day without your phone, without anybody in your room, to sit down close your eyes and just allow God to cleanse your thoughts. Allow God to cleanse your mind. Breathe. Take a breather. And let's take in God's presence so that we're ready for all those challenges that come our day. So that God can transfigure our faith from one level to the next. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever.